So in the previous video, we had to do green screen keying for the toy bus to mimic the epic bus flip from the Rocket Jump Hulu show. But we also had to do some rotoscoping as well. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to rotoscope. Now, rotoscoping is you are literally tracing out whatever object you want to isolate frame by frame and you're going to put it back to the layer that you just keyed. This time it's the wheels that just did not end up being on the green screen when it was filmed. So we're going to go back to our layer and the garbage mat that we just made, mask one, we're just going to put this to none for now so we can see you know, where the rest of the wheel is. And I'm going to zoom in. So I can zoom in close to the wheels and look at all the details. And what I'm going to do now is on the same layer, I'm going to select the pen tool. This is a very painstaking process, but I'm just going to trace the edge of this wheel with as many points as I think it needs to get in all the details, but not so many because um, since we're going to be tracing this frame by frame, we're going to have to move all these points manually. And after you made this, it's going to isolate the wheel, but just, you know, so I can see what all the frames are after this, I'm going to change uh, mask two from add to none as well, just so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit the drop down menu on mask two, and I'm just going to keyframe a mask path. And this is going to help you animate your roto mask so you can adjust it frame by frame because this wheel is going to change. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move the cursor one frame over and I'm just going to double click on the mask for the wheel and I'm going to just move it over and see what needs to be changed. And you pretty much do this until the end of the shot. So organization is key, especially if you're rotoing something with a lot of different parts and a lot of different bits. So what I like to do, and this is you know just my habit of whenever I'm working in After Effects, is I will label all my layers and I will label all my masks within those layers. So for this top one, I'm just going to call it Toy Bus. And since we're labeling right now, I'm just going to go on to the bottom. And this is already um, labeled BG, short for background. So for this one, for mask one, I'm going to label it Garbage Mat. And for mask two, I'm just gonna press enter and I'm gonna call it wheel back. So for people who are new to rotoscoping, I highly recommend just breaking down your rotos into different shapes. And this way you have a lot more control of the points and you only have to worry about you know one, one roto shape at a time in case you need to go back and change. So now we have this back wheel done, we're going to be doing the exact same procedure on the front wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the pen tool again and on the same layer and I'm going to be just doing the same thing. I'm going to draw a general shape and laying down as many points as I think I'll need to cover all the crevices and details of the wheel. One tip I will recommend is I would just go in and I would trace out the whole wheel. So then when I move it frame by frame, I can just select the whole mask and I can rotate them as I go. All right, so after I'm done with the front wheel, I'm gonna go to mask three and I'm gonna name this wheel front. And now we have, you know, successfully keyed and rotoed the majority of this toy bus. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all three mat and for the options, I'm gonna change them to add. And this is what we have right now. So we're getting along, but one of the things I'm seeing right now is I'm seeing the string that was used to pull the truck. And when we were rotoscoping with masks, before we just set all three of these masks to add, we can also do a subtraction mat. So on the same layer, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select my pen tool. And I'm going to just draw a shape big enough to cover the string. And then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna name this mask. I'm just gonna name it subtract so I know, you know, once I kind of set all these layers, this one I'm gonna be set to subtract. But just for now, I'm gonna set it to add so I can see where the string is. And same thing, I'm gonna I'm going to click on the keyframe for the mask path and I'm just going to go over frame by frame 
wherever I see the string, I'm just gonna make sure my mask covers that. So after you roto out the shapes to subtract the wire, now we're gonna go back to all of our masks because I'm gonna name this one subtract as well. And I'm gonna set the two subtract ones from add to subtract. And I'm gonna hide all of my roto edges using the toggle mask tool so I can see my shapes better. And this is, you know, what's been created so far. And I can still see the wire. So I'm gonna turn the mask back on and see where that problem is. And immediately I see that I need to kind of adjust a couple of frames as we go. All right, this is looking pretty good. So you're gonna notice that with rotoscoping, it is a lot more forgiving to roto something that's moving, you know, really drastically in your scene as opposed to very subtle movements. When you play it back in motion, your eye is not really going to catch all the edges. So you have a little bit of wiggle room to make a little bit more mistakes. Whereas if a subject is moving really subtly, then you really have to get in there and make sure that your edges, you know, are not distracting to your eye. Because essentially, when you're rotoscoping, you have to pay really close attention to the edges as that's you know like the first sign of a giveaway that something was rotoscoped back in. So immediately I see that the bus is a little bit too high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down the layer and under transform in position I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to the head of my shot and I'm gonna set a keyframe for position. I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. And I'm gonna make it bigger as well. So um, right below position and scale, I'm just gonna scale this up to make it look more menacing. With position selected, I'm just gonna move the truck back a little bit. So when it comes in, I'm gonna find that sweet point of where it just stops right when the guy's punching it. This is pretty good. So obviously this is um, for fun, you know, we're just having a huge toy truck and this guy is stopping it with a punch but there's a couple of details you can make to you know kind of sweeten the image one of the things you'll notice is that the guy doing the punching he has a shadow underneath him and our truck also had a shadow when we filmed it so i'm gonna create another rotoscope shape and bring back the shadow so back to our layer uh, we're gonna actually select all of the mats that we made and we're just gonna set them to none for now so we can see what else you know was in the plate and I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna select the pen tool and on the same layer I'm gonna make another mask shape and this time I'm gonna not um, roto so tightly to the edge I'm actually gonna leave a little bit of room because for this ground the grounds are pretty close in color and what I'm gonna do later is I'm gonna feather this mask so um, the grounds blend better from these two different plates so for this one, I'm just gonna call it shadow. And I'm gonna set it from add to none for now so I can see where I'm rotoing. Okay. Okay, so after I'm done with the shadow mask, I'm gonna select all the masks and set them to add. And for these two subtract ones, I'm gonna set them to subtract. Yep, now we have the shadow layer back. So under each mask, there's properties that you can animate. So one of the main ones is mask feather, and that's just gonna give you a softness fall off um, of where you made that shape so it blends easier with the background. Okay, so I'm gonna set it to 15 so it has a softer fall off and it blends um, easier with the background that's already here. So there you have it. We've successfully keyed and rotoed a truck and we put it in a completely different background. So this concludes our intro to keying and the rotoscoping and uh, feel free to download this project and trying out on your own and ask us questions in the comments or on the forums and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.